All right, guys. So here's where I'm looking at right now is that the quick concept of all of this, 100% of what we're going to be talking about today is there's a wild difference between what we would call a success list and what we would call a to-do list. If I take my success list and I exhaustively spread it all the way out and I go through everything, there's only going to be a few necessary items that have to get done for me to be able to be successful in my day, which is why obviously we call it a success list. This is not my concept. I am not the most brilliant person in the world, and this is not a, a new thing. This is not a like this is not going to revolutionize your life, except for the fact that it should, because we don't operate this way. This is just about putting action to the things that we already know. So if I were really looking at my day, I 100% could go through and list about a bajillion things. And a lot of times, most of us like those lists because what it does is it gives us the ability to go through and feel like we've accomplished some things. We'll start crossing stuff, especially those who are like list writers, and you and you cross that stuff out. Those who keep it in your head, you just know like, hey, I'm successful. I, I've got, I knocked it out. So when I look at this, creating a success list out of our to-do list is really important. And this, again, is not my concept. If you are familiar with um, the one thing, it's a book. Um, Gary Keller, Jay Popson wrote this book. And the idea, the concept behind it is, what's the one thing that you could do so that by doing it would make everything else easier or obsolete? And when we look at our activities in our world, we can truly get into that same kind of concept. Now, I don't think you can spend all day long doing just one thing. That's not the concept, right? I'm only going to sit around and do this one thing. Like, I, I've got to be able to have other elements of my business that are falling into place. And so when I look at it, there is the idea, though, that there's a success list that can come from my movement towards that one thing. Okay? So there's nothing at all special about what I have to say unless we put it into action. Because you've heard these kind of concepts before. So there, there really isn't anything new in the space. We're just going to explore how do we actually put it into business. Now, I want to connect us to the why. Why is it really that important that we create a success list from our to-do list? One of the very first things that I want to speak on um, is that everything that we do, really the 80-20 principle fits into almost everything. And I've been really interested in this. So the 80-20 principle, so essentially, 80%, so 20% of the people are doing the majority of what's happening, or 20% of my business is actually creating the majority of my income. And so if I'm looking at that from the standpoint of the 80-20 principle, and I'm looking at my to-do list, this shows up everywhere. Look it up, it's, um, I'm gonna get it wrong, Peralti's 80-20. It's, it's just this, uh, this idea that 80% of everything is produced by 20% of the people. And it shows up literally everywhere. Start running your math. In your math, you'll find that this principle shows up pretty closely in almost everything. We've been running our business now um, at the market center for about two and a half years, and I'm finding this pop up everywhere. It's happening everywhere. If you want to look at the listings taken, listings taken are happening from about 20% of our agents. If you're looking at the income coming in, it's happening from about 20% of our activities. If you're looking at the way that like people coming go from our office like it's it's all showing up and so this is just very true over a long enough time frame this is showing up and so the reality is it's showing up in our business so we need to be able to identify what are the 20 percent items that are absolutely necessary for me to be able to make sure i'm producing the 80 percent okay that's one of the very first things in this step in this idea of creating a to-do list or success list we need to know that this is going to show up and if we haven't identified the money-making activities in our businesses, then we're actually going to be playing behind the game. We're going to probably be checking out this box. And this box may have some moments that hit into money-making activities, but they're not money-making activities. They're supporting activities. It's probably still need to be done by somewhere, somehow, somebody. But that's when we have a conversation about leverage. If I didn't do any of this, this will still run my life. If I didn't do any of this, this will still run my life. We just haven't put pen to paper to identify where is our true 20%. And I want you to really think about that. What is your true 20% that is making money? 
Where are the money-making activities? Because those are the first things that we need to be able to be putting into our success list. When we're looking at how do we take our do list and create a success list for it, money-making activities are one of the important factors to it. Okay. Money-making activities are super important. And I don't, know, I don't know that we have really identified those things. And here's what I would actually encourage you to do. I do this all the time with, uh, with people that I coach. Understand what, what is the net value of your day. I want you to really, at the very beginning of your day, every single day, you've already started creating your calendar and your schedule. What are your money-making activities for that day? What are your non-money-making activities for that day? If this is at an imbalance, you've got some decisions to start making on what your success looks like for a day, okay? If I'm measuring this, I have some decisions that I can make for my success. This right here has been one of the biggest eye-openers for people because they haven't realized how, how imbalanced their life has become, the business has become from the things that are most important to business or to like, again, this be used in anywhere the ideas can seep into your family and your relationships but if I'm looking at this I'm measuring every single day I now have the ability to affect the rest of my day to get it back into balance I can look at this and go well I know that this is an activity that the default activity I'm going to have to run to the grocery store which obviously is kind of an irrelevant term right now with COVID but if I'm gonna if I have to run to the grocery store and it is at an imbalance, I'm going to be damn well sure that while I'm at the grocery store, I'm going to have the right conversations with anybody who I run into to make sure that that conversation is moving towards a money-making activity for me. Okay? So we need to identify what are the things that I have to do, what are the most important things for me to get into this money-making activity. We have to identify those. And there's a huge difference between what is money-making activity, and what is just task that is a must. There's a huge difference, and our success list is driven from probably first that money-making activity spot. And I say probably just because some of us are in different businesses where your success list compared to your to-do list um, is going to look a little bit different depending on your industry. In our industry as a real estate agent, you need to be identified what are, you, what are the things that I can do to make sure that I'm moving the needle forward. Those need to be the successless things. Those are the very first things that we jump into. Okay. Hopefully this makes sense. So the second thing I'm gonna look at when I'm really considering how do I build my to-do list, how do I build my success list, you really need to understand goal setting, okay? You really need to understand goal setting. You need to have goals set, okay? Because I can 100 bajillion percent create my success list Straight from my goal, my goals, straight from my goals, there's a word, straight from my goals. And here's what I mean by that. If I'm looking at my goals, I want to close a certain amount of units or make a certain amount of money, I have one big, huge goal, okay? And again, this is not, this is not me. Goal setting is pretty simple. Goal setting is done a bajillion different ways. It's probably the third time I've said bajillion. I apologize for that. And yet when I look at all of this, when I'm looking at my goals and I go into my to-do list, if my to-do list isn't filled with items that are directly influenced by my goal, they probably don't even need to be in my to-do list, not even to mention what my success list looks like. Now here's the thing, if I was looking at my goal, these are more than likely gonna be strategies for me to move towards my goal. There's a difference in our world to be able to understand strategies and how to prioritize those strategies. In our world, we call it a one, three, five. So my goal is my one thing. I probably have three priorities from that. And then I can have five strategies underneath each one of those things to be able to get there. If I'm looking at my to-do list, it more than likely are, it more than likely is, whatever grammatically is correct there, the strategies for me to hit my goal. These things are more than likely the strategies for me to hit my goal. So now, not only are we identifying money-making activities, we've also got our goals aligned. And so now we've got activities that are hitting in our goal. And if you're doing the math here, our to-do list is probably at about 150 items at this point, right? It's just going and 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 going. 
which is why we get into this stunt mode of, I don't know what to do next, so I'm going to do the most simplest things first because it makes me feel like I am achieving my goal. And the reality is, is that what we chose are 80% tasks. And we've done very little to actually influence the moving of the needle. We've done very little to actually influence the moving of our goal. We're not moving in the right direction because we're actually creating our to-do list from the activity of task and not the activity of moving forward. We're not actually paying attention to the moving forward moments, okay? Does this make sense? Crystal, if you have any questions that pop up in the Facebook side of things, you're welcome to toss those over in this direction. Um, so just feel free to do whatever you need to do there. Okay, so we're on the same page here. Going back to this 8020 idea, that 8020 is going to show up everywhere. Identify where your what are your money making activities. And this is directly influential money making activities. Goal. What are the strategies that are going to help me to get to my goal? The next thing in that whole space here is that I've got to be able to chunk these things out. Uh, Crystal and I, uh, Crystal is my executive assistant. We look at our goals and we truly have a very specific space and direction that we want to go, regardless of what happens right now in today's economy. What happens right now in today's like systems that they're interrupting us with, right? What ha regardless of what's happening right now, we know that there's a way through, over, and around any obstacle to continue to move into the direction of our goal. And so we take and we look at our month, and we go, what is going to be the most impactful thing to move our needle forward? And we look at our priorities at that point. We're going through our priorities, and we just identify, like, if we were able to execute this priority at an extremely high level, then this month would be a success in moving us forward. And so then we identify that, isolate it, and if I'm looking at these strategies, I'm going to go through and say, well, when we're looking at our priority now, so we've created a priority for our month, priority for our month, and we go through and we're like, well, here's our priority for this month. That's a strategy we need. That's a strategy we need. This is a strategy we need. This is a strategy we need. So now we've got a very few things. What we've done is we've chunked down our goal into achievable steps. And again, None of this is rocket science, and yet I'm looking at a lot of us not moving in the direction of the needle. We're still looking at for every single day, I have to check every single one of these boxes for me just to survive. It's a whole different conversation for another day. But the things that we do to survive are not going to be the things that we do to thrive. They're not going to be the things that take us into the next stage. And so if we do what we've always done, we will get what we've always gotten, right? The old cliche phrase, do what you've always done and you'll get what you've always gotten. We're changing the way we think about our business so that then when we look at this list, we can start effectively changing the needle and bringing into our world, getting our unfair share of what's happening in the market. We can always be moving in the direction of what we want regardless of what's happening at the default from the world. The world can toss us any and everything, and yet I can still make a decision to move towards, above, around, through, anything to move in the direction of my goal. I promise you, this is not a tunnel vision moment to where we only have a few options. This is a tunnel, like, this is the, I don't know, I, an explosion. I don't know if that's the right word. We're looking at, you told me I can only do these things. Well, I'm going to find where all of my options are within that, and now I'm expanding my vision and my view to continue to move forward, okay? So goal, we chunk it down. We know what our strategies are. We can pull those over so that now, when I'm digging my success list, now here's my success list, I can go through and say, well, these are money-making activities that always need to find their ways into my success list. Here are our priorities. I need to make sure those are moving into my success list. From each of these, you probably have to-dos to make sure they're successful. Well, now everything's become systematized. So the best thing that we could ever do is get our brains out of our business and let the playbook run. The way we create the play is to take a daily scope of what we're doing to move in the direction of our goal and kick that needle forward, okay? So we've got our 80 20 ideas, understanding our money-making activities. We've got our goals, understand chunking them down. Now let's move into the idea of mission, vision, and value. 
if I am looking to create a to-do list and to build my success list from that, I should understand what my mission, vision, and values are for my business. If you know me, and a few of you on this call know me very well, this is where I will spend, I could literally spend six or seven hours talking about mission, vision, and values. When we have aligned our mission and vision and values properly, and we have clarity around that, we can do anything with our business. We can pivot in any direction, regardless of what's happening in the environments around us. We can continue to move forward because we've identified the things that are most important to us with so much clarity that everyone around us understands who we are. We've created, we've manifested our reality. We've created reality, right? The whole idea of perception is reality. Well, if that is true and I have clarity around my vision, then I can easily tell people the way in which I want them to act and feel and think about me. And so I'm creating my reality. If I have clarity around my mission, vision, and values, when I begin to look at my to-do list, it should almost emulate those statements. When I look at my success list that I drive from that, it should be blatantly obvious that it is spitting out without me even thinking about it. It is spitting out a true movement towards my mission, vision, and values. So when we're capitalizing off of creating the exhaustive to-do list that then we can shrink down into our success list, what we've done is we've moved in the direction of our business based off of our mission, vision, and values. What we've said is like, regardless of what's happening today and the time frame in which it will happen, I can move forward fast and 100% the direction that I want my business to go. I don't have to stop because somebody has put an obstacle in my way. I can move over and above it and around it and through it. I've also been able to set my goals and my goals are immovable. And if my goal is immovable, my success list is about busting through every barrier to get to my goal. If my goal is immovable, then all of my activities change in the direction of my goal. And so when I'm looking at my to-do list, if anything doesn't move me in that direction, it is obsolete in my world today. If I'm not making money, then I can't be in my business. I'm looking at that 80-20 principle, and I'm looking at where is my money being spent. I should probably have a profit and loss statement to help me understand that. So where are we at in these spaces? Are you paying attention and controlling these spaces? Because these are the major elements for us to be able to dig into our business and understand what are the most important things today to move me towards success. And I'll tell you, so one of the things that I do in this is that I actually have, and I'll send it out. Um, Crystal will make sure she captures everybody, and we'll make sure we'll find you, hunt you down. We'll send it out. It's really simple. It's not even anything magical. I took it from an idea. Um, it may have even been in the One Thing Workshop book, and I just made it into a quick little graphic for me. And every day it's just literally, it's a to-do And then there's a little box of success. And I made a little success box, very tiny. And I put numbers in it. I can't give, go beyond five things. And that's just me personally. Like, you can do whatever you want from your success list. But I literally write down all the things that I needed to do. And then I pull over the things that were my success. If there's something in here that I believe should have been in my success list, well, it can happen tomorrow or it can happen the next day. But today, success doesn't happen unless I do these things. And this is the only thing that is priority for me. And that is how I build my accountability. That Crystal builds my accountability for my daily activities based off of this. Now, we actually do this at a really, really high level. We have um, we do it through Trello, and I'm happy to do any kind of private um, coaching or show you, walk you through that with Crystal and I, how we execute the daily activity for accountability. We can talk about that. I'm cool with that. But there's also one more thing that we need to make sure that we're discussing. So these are the three things, regardless of what's happening around us, if we're building our to-do list based off of having a gauge on these things, you're going to build your success list properly. If you've built your to-do list from these elements, you're going to build your success list properly. Okay? That's just true. You're, you, if you have clarity on these, there's no way that you could choose to do something that is in this box 
if you know this is the most important. I'm just going to say that thing. If you know and have clarity on these three things every single day, it is going to be extremely difficult for you to choose something that's anti this. We can't say no to our own ideas and our own goals. So we only have to choose the things that can say yes towards moving the needle with the direction we want to go. Now, let's be serious in the fact that we have been handed a big old pot of default. And when I say default activity, here's the thing. If I'm at the default of somebody, right, because I say that a lot, if I'm at the default of somebody, I have been forced into a box because of somebody else's system around me. Now, for some of us, that is right now very literal because they just announced like having essential or non-essential businesses. And so some of us don't have anywhere to go today. We have been told what we can do and we can't do anything about that. So we are the default of those decisions. I can't do anything other than that. Those are default activities. That's at least how I explain that. So some of us, if we have a boss who tells us what to do every single day, we are the default of them. Okay, so when I look at the default, we're at a big default moment with COVID. The way that I look at this is that almost always, if we've been handed something that we cannot control, and we're at the default of somebody else's activities or intentions, I want to, I'm not going to say, I can, with certainty, find the next way through. And for me, right now, the next way through that should be landing into my success list is all of the items that move me forward. As in, not a band-aid to fix today, but items that move me forward. I need to start picking through from my to-do list and dig into the spaces, the cracks, the crevices, the curiosities, the questions. I 100% need to be digging into what are the items that move me forward? We may start identifying things in our to-do list that we would have never, ever put on our success list because it's just not that important. For us to do the daily activities and move towards our business is just not that important. Well, default happened, and now we have to be forced into that. And I'm thinking about a couple of things, and I'll give you some great examples. There are some people there. Um, right now, I think New York has just shut down all terminated for sale by owner, expired. All the solicitation into those spaces is gone. Well, in a real estate world, there are a lot of real estate agents that build their business based off of that. And so their main lead source is that, and they're really brilliant at it. I have two or three businesses in our office that they are gangbusters on that. They're really, really good at helping people who didn't have an agent who helped them move forward find a solution and get her home sold. So they're really good at finding solutions for those who didn't get their home sold the first time through the terminated and expired listings. Well, if New York shut it down, I don't have that as an option anymore. My day-to-day, -day, my normal day-to-day, -day, these moments for me, my database might have been a very small chunk of what was producing money for me, and so it was a very small activity. It, it wasn't landing. It wasn't always landing in my, my success list. My database was more along the lines of a marketing tool versus a money-making tool. Well, now I'm looking at what's moving me forward. Even though that is in a success-ish category, it is a to-do-ish category, it's more important now than ever for me to focus on my database because I just got hit a default activity. I cannot do this. Well, then now i got to choose the forward activity of my database, and i got to look at my database in the same vein as I would have looked at in the terminated and expired and transition my business in there, right? There's always a way through, around, or forward. There's always a way forward. So when we get handed default activities, what is your choice to move forward? Our tendencies are to wait. The con of man is the path of least resistance. And so our tendencies are going to be more along the lines of wait. And we're not in an environment where we can wait. If we wait and we pump the brakes at all, we lose valuable momentum. We lose tremendous in the ideals of momentum. Momentum is a very, very real thing, um, even metaphorically in our businesses, to have momentum going forward, to be able to be building relationships. Default activity stunts that, unless we choose an activity that moves us forward. We've got to keep forward motion going, whatever it looks like and at all costs. In my opinion, when default moments happen, 
I've got to be able to figure out mo moving forward. In every day, examining my business, I need to be doing these three things. My to-do list should be built from the money-making activities, the goal setting, and the mission, vision, values. My success list then is about how can I most impact that today to move the needle forward. The success list is coming from that concept for the one thing. What's the one thing that I can do that by doing it will make everything else easier or obsolete? And so if I'm looking to really move the needle forward, I should be then digging into all the to-dos and gravitating to those few things that if I only did those things today, they would 100% get me the results that I needed. So that is the biggest chunk that I have to say. I think we're going to probably dig into some of these things specifically. I want to open up to any conversations, any questions. Um, you're welcome to unmute yourself if you're curious, if you have a question, if you have a comment. Some of you do this really, really, really well. Some of you may have some curiosities about like, hey, practically, how would I do this? Or practically, what should I do here? I'm okay to have those conversations. I'm open to like be able to speak into those spaces. So if anybody has any questions or comments, now's a great time to unmute yourself. If you'd rather type in your question into the chat, I'm paying attention to chat. Um, I know that I have Crystal over into the Facebook Live, and she's digging in there. Um, and so if there's anything happening in Facebook Live, you're welcome to um, translate those questions. Crystal, you can pop them over here, copy and paste them over here, and uh, we'll make sure we get every single person out there. But the biggest thing today is that if we're looking at and we're starting from a position of what do I do today? What's my day going to look like? We're already behind the eight ball. We need to be starting at the starting line. And the way we do that is to identify these things early and fast. Chunking our goals down. This happens because I'm already certain about where my goal is. And I know how to identify the strategies that move me forward. I know how to prioritize. Okay. So, if anybody, Mr. Armour says, good stuff. Right? Thanks. That's my father-in-law. Hi, Mr. Armour. Billy. Hi, Billy. Oh, he's coming over here. He just popped in. Hi. I know how to identify the strategies that they for, but I know how to prioritize. All right. Okay. So, anybody? I'm going to meet you. Billy, if, I'm going to mute you real fast because I'm getting some echo. It's all right. No, no challenges there. All right. All right, guys. Anything, any questions, any curiosities? I'm here to help in any way. Like, obviously, this is stuff that I deal with every single day. Helping agents build their businesses, arrange their life, arrange what's next, do the thing. Like, this is literally what I'm doing every single day. So you're welcome to um, open door. There's no questions, no comments that are unwelcome, everything. We are live, though, so do me a favor and watch all the language moments. Let's not be too languagey. Um, but, yeah, Lucas, I saw you on mute. Did you want to pipe in? Yeah, so I just had a question. We you were talking earlier before we started about investors. Yeah. Um, in in the time, uh, what opportunities would would you be looking for your investors right now? Yeah. Okay. So I want to make sure and let, let's open up because uh, you and I got a chance to talk slightly before. So he's asking about investors. And so um, three weeks ago, when the writing was on the wall of what was coming down the pipeline, I back to all of my agents and I said look when the S hits the fan when the crap hits the fan there are still those who are willing to spend money all the time and those are going to be investors investors are always going to spend money all the time and they are immune to the idea of needing to walk through a home most of our investors are willing to to put in the deal side on the scene and so if we're looking at that the opportunities that we have so when I look at that um, I want to look at it in two scopes, okay? So the first scope is going to be um, creating a solution for your clients, being a very solution-based person. So if I, did, if I identify people who are investors, I can go through and be looking into my own listings or looking into my office listings, look at the ones that have been on the market for a long time. Those are probably opportunities that I could go in and have conversations to help somebody be able to move forward. There's a lot of fear based around the whole COVID mentality. If I could get you an offer today, would that be something that you'd be willing to look into? Yes, it would. Awesome. I have a group of investors who may be looking to possibly do that. The iBuyer situation, a lot of iBuyers are shutting down. It's our opportunity to be able to dig into our investor pool and to say, look, I can create 
great opportunity for all my investors by going back through all my properties and asking a simple question like, hey, as everything's going crazy, would you be willing to get an offer in from an investor knowing that it might be a reduced cost? A lot of your people may be willing to entertain that because in their thought processes are like, I still have to move forward and I've got to find a way to do that. And so they're just making the decision. I've seen some of this already happen. So the second thing that I would look at is like, how can you actually become an investor in this frame of, uh, or this state of the world? When you look at the interest rates right now, I can truly become an investor if I'm an agent because my business is real estate. I identify the deals when they come through, so now they're my opportunity to take them. And there's ways in which a real estate agent can take all of the contributions from the deal and move it into their closing costs. And so it's truly an opportunity for you to do that. Um, talk to your mortgage professional about how you can become the investor. Um, and then uh, the first thing, Lucas, and I'll go backwards, uh, probably should answer this question first, is that like identifying opportunities within our database. So what does it look like to start calling your database and going, hey, as everything's going crazy and everything, I just wanted to spot check, you know, as a real estate agent, my protection is actually your wealth. I'm my, being your real estate agent, I have a fiduciary responsibility for real estate and part of your wealth is in real estate. So I'm just curious looking at your current world. Are you, do you have any questions? What are you thinking about? Start filling them out and then get into the space of like, awesome. If you had the opportunity to invest in properties, would you do that? And it's a yes or no question. If they say no, it's like, awesome. Well, I want to educate you on like what could be potential so that you're just in the know. And if they say yes, it's like, awesome. And I just want to educate you what's going to happen so that you're in the know. Because what we don't know is what's going to happen in the future of this business right now. It's, there's a lot of unknown. It's predictable, but it's unknown. And we know that if the economy keeps going in a certain direction, there are going to be deals to be made for people who need to be able to find money now to be able to unload real estate, to be able to do what's best for them and their family. And that's not a wrong thing to be able to help them to be able to sell their homes, even if it's at a discount, because the condition of the market now is the only condition that we know. And the right time to buy a house is always right now, because it's the conditions that we know. So just to be the fiduciary to the people who have already called us their real, their real estate agent, and their conversation about wealth is something that we can definitely step in as a concierge to their wealth and say, hey, you are you just aware of what is potentially possible for you? So that's, I don't know if it answered your question, but that's how I would do it right now. If I were looking at my own world, I would call my days. I would educate them on the possibility or the potential of purchasing real estate, and I'd also position myself with my mortgage company of knowing how I might be able to get some of these properties at a 0%, knowing that I can be not only a an opportunity for um, helping my own clients, but also building my own equity. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. What else, guys? Anything on the to-do list, success list kind of stuff? Chris, I don't know if anything's popping up in there. Okay. And I'm okay with this being it. Like, this is still a lot. Like, there's, there's no challenges here. And a lot of the classes that I teach, it's very self-reflective. A lot of the things that I'm doing is I'm asking people to look inside of themselves and inside of their business and begin to evaluate things. Because if we're doing that, we're making a conscious effort to move in the right direction. If we're just active, like we're just active, we're just picking things to do, I don't know that you're moving the needle. And I don't know that you're doing what is necessary for you to weather what's happening around us. So we've got to be able to start looking into our business. I think every single one of us should be looking at these things. How's, what's the net value of my day? How can I affect that by picking the things on my success list that moves the needle forward? How do I make sure that I'm building those things based off of clarity around my money-making activities, my goal setting, and my mission vision values? Right now in the world of default, how can I make sure that I set my success list is always a motion forward? If I am doing these things, and it is a lot to do, it's a lot to think about, but if I'm doing these things, I promise you, you're in the right direction to weather the storm. You're 100% going into the mode of making it to the other end and in process, truly maintaining and having that that you desire. We, we can design ourselves. I've been in many sales positions in my life, in my career, and this is the only one that I've been in where I realize that I am in full total control of what's happening. The world cannot hand me a default too big that doesn't allow me to move forward.
All right. Well, if y'all are good, I'm also good. And I'll go ahead and um, close this out. If you need anything at all, I'm going to toss my email again just for a second in here so y'all can tap into that. Randy Olive at kw.com. Okay. So you're welcome to grab that. You can email me anytime. If you want to be able to have some conversations privately about like some of the things that you might be able to do to align your business, I'm okay with that. It'll be um, scheduled. We'll have to figure out like how that's in the schedule. I'm investing 100% of myself into our agents, into the agents of our community. And so thank you for those of you who are tapping into this. Um, my desire is to see us thrive and to grow strong and to be able to absolutely continue to maintain our businesses and grow in the directions we want to. Your family deserve it. You deserve it. It's tough, and yet we will survive. So, y'all have a great, great, great day. If you need anything, let me know. Y'all are awesome. Shannon, you're welcome. You're awesome. Come here. You want to say hey real fast? Hey, guys. And Adam wants to say, have a good day. Say, have a good day, buddy. <laughs> That'll make you smile. <laughs>